Trashomaniacs. Welcome back to the Geo Gearheads, episode 231, where this time we're going to talk about tips and tricks, and most of them come from you, but all of us on the show, uh, which is myself, Daryl W4, the Bad Cop, and our special guest, Doc Firewoman, are going to interject with some of our own tips along the way, but we got a ton of tips and uh, tricks from our audience, so thank you everyone for doing that. Uh, Chris, what was it that we had actually asked? Do you recall? Uh, just send us your best tip or trick, and I think it's a lot like Halloween. You don't know what you're gonna get. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. You know, we we have a little of both this evening. Sometimes it's a rock, like Charlie Brown. Yeah, he only got <laughs> rocks. What'd you get? I got a rock. <laughs> oh my! Yeah, that is, as I recall, basically what we asked, and we had to pick one of those entries, uh, and you know, we did that randomly so anyone could win who actually sent something in. And, of course, if you sent it in your own voice, you got two entries into that drawing. Hmm, this is interesting. Uh, Limax is saying uh, in the live Q&A that he's only seeing my video. He's not seeing... Yeah, that. mine says off-air still. Oh, so really? 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 This is so bizarre. <laughs> but, I told but you, it's are, me. There it's are the Walmart live thing. Heads. <laughs> I noticed that we have the uh, second Geo Gearhead here still. So I know you can click on somebody and select them. Is that perhaps what's happened? Is there a white no. box around any of those? No. Uh, so hopefully uh, my tweaking there uh, fixed the problem. Not on my end. I'm still off the air. Huh. So I think we just have Google issues tonight. <laughs> I, I tried to get on air once, and, well, you know, I jumped right back off air. All right. I'm very pro-air, though. I don't think there's anything we can do. Yeah, I'm so, pretty pro-air also. I, I kind of like it. It helps me live. I'm yeah. addicted. Yeah. I'm addicted. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I, there's nothing, unfortunately, that I can do about it from this end, so, you know, we're just going to have to hope that uh, it fixes itself uh, some point during the show. Don't pick your nose tonight, Daryl. Everybody will see you. Oh, this is true because, you know, it's only me. Right. Yes. And I even well, clean my office up. <sighs> oh, <laughs> if they that. can't see it. No, it's uh, disappointing. But well, it's looking fabulous, Deborah. I just well, want to let you know, you. best I've ever seen in your office. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, in any case, so I think that we had actually offered up one of those uh, WWFM coins from coinsandpins.com so oh, I'm, I'm, what? I'm here now hi okay, <laughs> <laughs> yeah we, we are definitely having some google issues tonight uh, but uh, uh, Doc Firewoman who was it that we drew as the winner for tonight's episode uh, the winner for tonight's episode is Axeman22 and congratulations and uh, that has already gone out along with a bunch of the other prizes unfortunately I'm taking like another podcast host I know, and sat on the prizes a little bit too long. Uh, so, uh, Chris, what did Axeman22 give as his tip? Well, he said, always read the full description before attempting the cash. Often there's a requirement you must complete to get the cash, get this cash, but cashers, especially newbies, just find it and say TFTC, if they even say that, even if the challenge or requirements haven't been met. You know, I've had so many of the uh, caches these days where it's, you know, I just don't even bother reading the uh, description, especially like the parking grabs. Mm -hmm. And even most of the, you know, I, I went for something like five gadget caches this weekend and really didn't even read the descriptions on those. <laughs> yes, I know they're gadget caches. There's not a whole lot that... Uh, uh, Puzzler 26 puts in the uh, cash page. So I only look at it after I found the cash and have to figure it out and get stuck. 
I'll admit, I'll you know look at a cache, and I look at the logs first to see if it's been recently found, and then I head on out. If I'm having trouble finding it, then I go look at the description, and uh, maybe, as Giraffe zero fifteen says, uh, don't read the hint immediately. Give it a go without it first. So that's what I do. I, yeah. I try to do that. <laughs> I try. You read the hint first. I try to read the description because I know how much effort I put into mine. Mm -hmm. So I try to read the description. And the app that I use, um, I don't know if I can say that or not. I use Cashly. Oops, I wasn't supposed to say that. But it has the little icons that tell you if it's been found without having to right. go into the log section. And I really like that because more than once I've tried to look for something and didn't read the logs, and then found out it's been DNF'd like five times in a row or something. And I'm like, well, I'm glad I wasted that hour. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, I'm finding that so many of the apps do have that uh, little ticker box to show you what the last five logs are. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm seeing that in so many places now that I might be wrong, but I think even the official app, the uh, former intro app, does have the uh, little ticker to show you the last five logs as well. No, oh, well, we'll check that out. Well, in one of them, I can't remember which one, I had seen something, it might have been Cashly, was actually doing filtering so it uh, got rid of all of the notes and the, um, um, oh shoot, what was the other one? It might have just been the notes, but it, they put a bunch of filtering in there so that you didn't get the extraneous logs like, like Geosphere, I've mm -hmm. gone to caches where you know you have to go in because all you find are those uh, uh, notes from people dropping trackables into the cache. Right. And you don't know if it's a note that someone had said, oh, it's not there, or if it's a, you know, we're going to drop it. Uh, Limax says that the old app even had the last five logs, uh, but I think what he's talking about is actually loading the full logs because I don't think it had that little ticker. Yeah. Right. What we're talking about is just the little thumbnails to say, okay, the last five logs were, you know, one DNF and four found it. Yeah, the the official app does not have that. The geocachinger uh, app. The geocachinger? Okay. I was thinking it did. No, I just like, I guess, I don't know if I'm lazy or if I'm just in a hurry. I just like being able to pull up the information that's right there without having to click another one more layer down. I don't know what that is. If that's lazy or just being impatient, it's in, it's it's efficient. Yes, that's better. I like that better. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, and you were also suggesting going back to the uh, Axman comment with the uh, noobs that uh, uh, they be allowed to try to find the uh, cache first, uh, and that's actually something that I've had to do a little bit lately. Is you know go out with newer cachers and tease them uh, with, you know, oh, I found it, here it is, you know, and start giving them hints after, you know, they can't find it, you know, two, three minutes into the search. Right. I, I have a friend who's just started caching. She actually got 100, her 100th yesterday, and it literally sit on my hands if I know where it is, and, and because she'll get kind of frustrated, and I'll be like, you're hot, you're cold. <laughs> hotter, colder, where, and she'll, you know, so I want her to enjoy it as much as I do, so I'm having to learn to be a little less bossy, if that's the right word. <laughs> oh. <laughs> a little less yeah, hands-on, maybe, is a better way to put it. <laughs> You're efficient in your time as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Limax says that uh, uh, his GPSR does have a tally rather than what order it was. So it shows you how many of each type of a log, and that's frequent, but that doesn't really tell you what you want to know for things like, is this likely there? And that comes into play a lot with uh, uh, you know the newbies as well, is you want to make sure that you find the caches, so not go to one that has DNFs on it. And that's been one of the issues when I'm selecting caches, is I go uh, in there and it's like, well, the last five logs are DNFs. When is this person going to take care of it? 
but it's the closest ones to wherever we are or to their house or whatever that might be. Mm-hmm. Limax uh, said he first found his first 60 by himself, didn't know many cashers way back then. Um, I think that's kind of the way that uh, my caching career went. Yeah. And it definitely makes you a better finder because the more I go out with other people, the l- less apt I am to find caches on my own. That's true. Uh, I was definitely that way. I can certainly sympathize. The first fake light cover plate that I ever looked for. Oh, yeah. There was a lot of swearing going on in that parking lot. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> well, even the first lamp skirt was like that. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I remember I the, have several of those. I remember the first light plate I had found um, hadn't been found in a while. So not only was it magnet, it was stuck. You know, I went to wiggle it. Nope, didn't move. Like, it's got to be there. And I, I, you know, out of frustration, I pulled harder than I thought I should have. Pops right loose. Oh my God. Well, and I had one of those that had been painted over. Oh, there you go. The crew came by, painted the uh, lamppost, and painted that in place because it was there. Uh, Sydney uh, uh, Shermanator18 says that when she first got started, she went with her boyfriend or by herself. Uh, didn't know any other cashers for a long time, and that's very true. And I wish that there were a better way to get uh, cashers uh, mentored uh, if they want it. And hopefully they'll want it because it makes it so much more fun. Yeah, I wish there was a better way to really push events for newbie cashers. You know, if you're in the geocaching or app and you, you know, it, this is my hopes, right? You mark that you're new or, or don't check the advance or uncheck the advanced mode or however it's going to be, not the way it is now. Um, but the, the fact that you could um, go ahead and say, you know, hey, I'm new, what do I need to know? It's like, here, here's an event, go here. Well, and then I think something that would be really cool with that is, uh, hey, there's going to be an event near you, you know, today, tomorrow, whatever, check it out. You know, some kind of alert as you open the app the first time that day to tell you that there is something nearby that you might want to check out to meet other cashers. That would be really cool. Or if you just write, found it in your log more than five times in a row, maybe they should send you those two. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Well, Shermanator18 sent us uh, some uh, tip, or a tip, I should say, on the uh, Google Plus uh, thread for this event. And she said, when caching with your dog, let them smell the cache and then give them a treat. Soon they'll be finding the caches for you. I don't know about that. I've heard stories of people who have fed their dogs out of ammo cans. So they associate the ammo can smell with food and and they'll go find it for you. But, you know, a Tupperware that has never held food isn't going to have a particular smell. I well, I think what they're looking for uh, is the smell of the people who have touched it. But okay. everyone has a different smell. This is true. But it's probably similar enough that the dogs would be able to uh, find it. But feeding them out of the uh, ammo cans, I don't think it's going to work. Because when's the last time that you actually found an ammo can in the wild? Uh, not too long ago, actually. Oh. Yeah, I found them. We've actually, got a actually, around here of urban ammo cans. I found a... Uh, um, plastic ammo can uh, hmm. this weekend. Actually, no, it was on Monday. It was on the holiday. That was not your usual cache, and that it was an awesome hide. I actually periscoped that one, I think. Nice. No, you know what? And that was on Instagram, too. But see, if you give them a treat every time they go up to a lamppost, <laughs> you'll never get out of the Walmart parking lot. Well, Exactly. <laughs> I actually got to cash with Sydney and her dog uh, last week, and so I got to watch her uh, dog try to look for for caches. And the we weren't really looking for any traditionals, but um, her dog would go up and kind of explore the different crevices a little bit. So that was kind of cool that she had taught her to do that. So did it work? Well, we weren't looking for any traditionals. Oh. We did virtuals and earth caches because we were at Niagara Falls. So. So can the earth? Can the dog smell out earth caches? That's a good dog. <laughs> Especially if you could answer them for you. <laughs> She's in the live Q&A, though, and said, uh, uh, find those caches, dog. <laughs> I, I could just see her, you know, commanding the dog in the parking lot. That's great. Limax, though, yeah. says, uh, it's been a while since he's found an ammo can, but he did find a 35-millimeter film can today. 
which is another rare find. It is. You know, I haven't gone to the uh, to the local, well, what do you even call it anymore? You know, film processing plant in your uh, in your local neighborhood. Uh, neighborhood. I was uh, big box store or right. um, or uh, well, and they're drug about store. the only ones that have them. They're the uh, drug stores and the uh, big yeah. box stores because uh, most of uh, the uh, independent guys are gone. Yeah, exactly. They just can't do it. Mm-hmm. They'll print photos for you. Yeah. But Processing right. negatives has become a rare thing. Exactly. Yeah, but you know what I was thinking is if I could train a dog to find any type of caches, I'd want him to find the bison tubes in the uh, 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 weeds and in the uh, vines and stuff. That's where I need the help. Yeah, especially, especially like in your pine tree. Yeah. Uh, Limax says that the word he thinks you're looking for is photomat. Yeah, well, you remember photomats? They were drive ups. I do. Yeah. <laughs> Now they're all coffee houses. They're the same buildings. Yeah, yeah, they're <laughs> drive-through coffee houses. Well, apparently film cans are so rare that that bomb scare today, they didn't recognize mm. a film can. I, the, it, it was bigger than a film can. I, I saw the picture of it. Oh, okay. So, but someone was saying that there were wherever they were at that the, there were young people on the uh, like police force. They didn't know what a film can looked like. Right. So. Uh, okay, Sydney once again pipes up in the live Q&A. Rogue, the dog, has found a few caches before her and let her straight to them. Oh, well, uh, there you go. So, Sydney, I'll give you that. I, I'm sorry, I was doubtful. But, you know, <laughs> if the dog's doing it for you. Oh, yeah, I've heard a lot of the uh, caching dogs, but uh, Wet Coaster thinks that uh, Land Monkey's dog could probably find the earth caches. Definitely. Piggy could find the earth caches, especially if mud is involved. <laughs> All right. Uh, why don't you read our uh, comment from Team Mavaju? Team Mavaju sent in via Google Plus just before we went on air, mind you. He says, I got a great tip. Children are great for finding containers and caves. <laughs> if, one, uh, if one gets lost, you can easily replace them in a couple of years. So it's a lot like training the dogs. Oh. But they're a lot more expensive. They are. That Those years of training cost a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. And j- just in the food. Yeah. Not that dogs it, are cheap, but, you know. No, but, you know, you can give dogs table scraps. And, and doctors charge a lot more than the vets. Yeah, how come? I don't know. I think I mean, it's because they have to deal with the insurance companies. But think about it. A vet has to be able to cure a horse, a dog, a pig, a a bird, all one right after the other. You right. Know, people doctors just deal ah, with people. Ah, out there. I, I think I figured it out. See, the vets don't actually have to talk to the patients. That's true. Or, Ooh. you know, the patients can't talk to, you know, so that's, I there think, the go. difference. But if they, they do have to talk to the crazy them. owners. They have to talk to the crazy <laughs> owners, though. <laughs> Which I am one. <laughs> <laughs> Limax does uh, uh, kind of concur in here. He says his son actually found uh, cash in a hollow tree years ago after his daughter and he had given up on it. I know I've told the story, but my daughter and I were out geocaching and I was convinced the geocache was at a picnic table that people were sitting at. And I was like, well, we have to wait them out or you know, move on. She goes, well, hold on, Dad. I got this. And she walks up looks right underneath the table. No, Dad, no gum under this one. And turns around and comes back. The cash wasn't under there, but uh, I thought that was a brilliant move on her part. So the gum is the code word for cash, right? Yes. She she walked right up to the people sitting at the table talking and puts her head right underneath the table. <laughs> now, if I did that, you know, uh, there would be police there in no time at all. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Dogliest Cash also submitted uh, some tips via Google+. Plus. The first being handheld mirror saves spider and scorpion bites. Mm-hmm. Uh, cell phone, smartphone with uh, front-facing cameras work too. And that's actually what I've been doing the last several years because uh, I find that works better than the mirror ever did. Mm-hmm. Among other things, you can like stick it into the really, really tight spots, take a picture of it, and then zoom in. Right. So, yeah, th- th- that's awesome. I and love the flash the, uh, in the dark area works as well. Yeah, yeah it's got the built-in flashlight. So, yeah, that's, that's just gold. I love that one. 
Uh, then the second one was Micros in the Woods or Urban Space, uh, or, or, sorry, Urban Spruce and Pine Trees are too painful and not worth trying for. That's exactly right. <laughs> so I, I, I think that's something that we should take to heart because uh, Renee is allergic to the pine trees, so if there are any pine tree caches, she just kind of stands back and watches me try to find them. Yes, my friend is allergic to cedar trees, and the eastern red cedar in Arkansas is everywhere. Everywhere. It will grow in your house if you let it. So I'm the one that has to go busting up into the cedar trees. So, yes, I would agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know what I keep thinking I need to do is get those, like, really long rubber gloves, mm. like the ones that you use for, you know, examining horses and whatnot. I actually have a box full of those because I have a pregnant mare right now, so I can send you some. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's a question. Are they spruce-proof? Um, well, actually, they're not nitrile, so I don't know. <laughs> I'll have to test them out. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just worry that they're not going to be uh, quite durable enough and I'd end up getting poked even more <laughs> you know, and getting the little pickers stuck in what there. A, what about a full decon suit? Yeah, that would probably work. But that might actually draw more attention, Oh, which you probably yeah, don't but, want. But people would leave. Yeah, Sherminator does concur with the last one, by the way. Uh, she says she's found a few caches by sticking her phone in places and taking pictures. Pictures. But Limax says that he wishes he could share photos because he'd share the photo of the cache he found in a web, which I'm assuming is a spider web, and probably had the spider there. Who knows? Well, and speaking of that, I saw a photo probably about a year or two ago that had a uh, rattlesnake curled up on the uh, ammo can, which is not uncommon, apparently, in the warmer climates. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you know, <laughs> that's not going to help just having the mirror. Now, no, we mentioned no, that we no. got a few of these in uh, audio form, so let's go to the first one of those now. Hi. My name is Lullaby for You, and my tip is space pens. Back in my baby geocaching days, I used to try to make use of that sorry excuse for a writing instrument that people would leave in the cache box. I finally grew up and began using the one and only space pen. It never lets me down. I even upgraded to the model that I can wear around my neck with the cord. I simply cannot live without it. And that's my geocaching tip. Thanks. And that's one that I get to second. Uh, I actually run around with the telescoping space pen in my pocket. Like, you know, if whenever I'm wearing clothes, it's in my pocket pretty much. Wait a minute. No, I'm I don't not take it in the shower. That, that was way <laughs> too easy. It was. I don't take it in the shower. So. Oh, no, and it wasn't the shower that I was That wearing. wasn't where I was oh. going either, so I would not. Okay, well, we'll, <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. We'll keep it family-friendly and move along. <laughs> well, I will say there are some uh, knockoffs that I've played with. Uh, I don't really like the Inca pen as much, but it is a nice pen. Uh, it's, it's a different feel, and I, I just don't happen to like it for caching. But it's uh, it's not bad, and you know if you find one of those things cheap, check them out. They're pretty good. There you go. That's true. Well, Doc Firewoman, do you have any advice for pens? Yes, I do. If you're a poor person and don't have a space. Oh, and now she's locked up once again. Uh, Every yeah. time she answers a question. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I think the gel pens. So why don't you uh, start yeah, with that? Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, gel pens, if you don't have a um, space pen, gel pens work really well on wet logs, I've found. So I always carry regular pens because I'm a teacher and I have like 50,000 of them. and uh, Or um, I carry gel pens too. I don't have a space pen. Oh, and she locked up again, unfortunately. Uh, one thing, though, I will say is if you are trying to use a, a fairly regular style pen... Yep, you had cut out again. Yeah, I was just uh, saying I don't have a space pen, even though I'm right. an astronomer, which I should, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but if you have one of those pens that's not uh, the space pen, which is you know the temperature proof thing, mm -hmm. uh, if you're caching like in the winter, it's mm -hmm. a good idea to keep it inside your jacket. So if mm -hmm. you have an inner pocket, keep it there because that will keep it from uh, getting too solid 
<laughs> as it uh, gets colder out. Something to uh, uh, just make those pens a little bit more versatile. And Shermanator says that she got a space pen from Cash Advance. It's more like a red colored pencil, though. Hmm. I'm not sure what that one is. No, I don't either. Cash Advance usually sells quality products. And so Limax. Yeah, Limax says uh, buy a big uh, pack of pens from the office supply store. Yeah, that's actually what I started doing, and mm -hmm. I had to throw most of them away as I was cashing in the winter. Mm. Didn't keep that, them in your inside coat pocket, did you? No, I didn't at that point. But the other problem that I had was I'd get air bubbles and stop working. Ah, mm. oh, lovely, lovely, lovely. But there are uh, colors of the space pens. Uh, and the There was one that I actually got for someone as a gift that had the four colors, but I can't remember what the four colors were. It was obviously... Oh, silver. That's what it was. So you had the silver, which is not something you want as a cashier, trust me. Uh, the red, the black, and the blue. Hmm. But most of them Sil that you're going to find are... Signing the all-black logs. Right, exactly. Which you, you know, so do all the time. Yeah. That, that's an idea for a cash. You have to bring a silver or gold pen, something that'll write on a black piece of paper. Yeah, or mm -hmm. or you could use the ultraviolet ones. There you go. Well, and I've seen a lot logs of that at, use sharpies too. Oh, I've seen logs at events that were um, like I do flags and things like that, like garden flags, and people write on them with like a silver paint pen. So yeah. the silver space pen would come in handy for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then Limax says that he has a tendency to lose the pens at the caches. And that's actually why Lullaby for You got the one that goes around her neck. So that way mm -hmm. she doesn't lose it. I, I have one with a lanyard like that that I keep tied to my GPSR. So yep. I, if I have it with me, I always have a pen. Yep. Uh, and then Christopher is, says that uh, uh, Pilot V5 pens were great for winter caching. That might be the one uh, that I've heard uh, uh, doesn't write so well on the wet logs. But in the uh, winter, they're frozen. <laughs> uh, this is true. Although a lot of the time the uh, logs get damper around here in the winter because of all the snow getting in and out and they, it melts and never you know, dries out. Uh, Sydney wants to know where you can get the space pens with the lanyards, and I know that I've seen them at Amazon. I'm sure you can get them at a bunch of other places. The one that I had gotten uh, was the Trekker, T-R-E-K-K-E-R, -E -E I believe it was. Uh, and I just got that one from uh, REI right down the street. So they're available at uh, like the outdoor stores. I haven't really seen them anywhere else. Well, in my other... Like mail order. Oh. The other ahead, thing about pens, and this happened to me Monday when we were coming back from a, a camping or camping trip up north. I had my geocaching bag, probably had 30 pens in it. It's underneath everything. Everything. And we stopped to eat, and it's a county that I didn't happen to have in Arkansas. We parked literally right next to a light post cache. And we're sitting there look, tearing the truck apart looking for a pen without having to unpack everything in the parking lot. So I signed it with um, eyeliner because I couldn't find a pen. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's uh, not bad. You do what you got to do. So yeah. carry those, those packages of pens that I think Limex was talking about. They're a dollar at the dollar store. Buy like 50 of them and put them in every possible orifice in your vehicle. And then you will always have a pen. <laughs> hmm. uh, all right, uh, Bad Cop, you want to read the next one? You know, I would love nothing more. Stephen W54, that's very similar to your name, Daryl, sent, uh, oh, sent in an email. says, I have two tips relating to issues that I have encountered when trying to sign a log. If your phone or GPS has a protective is in a protective case, it may make a good surface for signing a log. There have been times when I've been trying to sign a log and both of my pens seem to have stopped working. Uh, doesn't that always happen? However, I've found that pressing hard and make, uh, making scratch marks on a piece of paper, I can usually get the ink to resume flowing. Since I don't want to scribble on a log sheet, I suggest having a scrap piece of paper in your caching bag to help your pen 
ink f- get flowing again? You know, I I use that uh, uh, back of the phone uh, thing all the time. Mm-hmm. But it's another nice feature of the space pens is that their pressurized uh, cartridges allow them to write like on the side of that uh, LPC uh, pole that you're standing next to because that's the only kind of cache we seem to find anywhere. <laughs> and the surface of the moon. Right. <laughs> and and it also works on the uh, glass of your car door. Exactly. All kinds of places uh, that you want. That's why, you know, you, you can use your, your phone, but that's why I suggest caching with an iPad because then you've got a big surface and it's easy to sign the logs and you don't even have to turn it on. You just want it, you know, something portable you can sign on. <laughs> you could just carry a clipboard around. Yeah, I was going to say, it's just a glorified clipboard. Oh, that's a great idea. They're less expensive, too. Yeah, yeah, very much. Mm-hmm. Uh, speaking of, com- or, well, earlier we were speaking of uh, problems with the Googles. Apparently, Limax says Googles don't like him either. You know, the Googles are picky. Yeah, and tonight just does not seem to be the uh, good night for the Googles. Mm-mm. So, why don't we go to another comment that was uh, sent in? This is Randy of JR and Juju. Learn to use the geocaching app. I had a coworker hit me up last week about geocaching in southern Colorado this summer with her children. When I brought up the app, the same one she had on her phone, I was pretty naive in how it worked. And it looks like we may have lost Daryl. Uh oh. Shall we go on without him? I have Um, no idea what we should say. Well, we were talking about learning to use the geocaching app. Yes, learning to use the geocaching app. That's that's always a good thing. Get to know the app that you're using. Um, It's it's going to make your um, experience so much better if you understand the app that you're using. I don't care if it's a geocaching app, if it's Cashly, if it's eGeo. Whatever it is, get to know that app, and you're going to find that you're going to be able to... Oh, hello. Hey. Hello. (laughs) Anyway, you're going to find that you're going to uh, be much more effective in finding and logging caches. Uh, I I missed most of that, and I was uh, recording the audio version over here. (laughs) Uh, Um, I just jumped in and, and talked about learning to use the geocaching app that you have. Ah, and I was uh, mentioning that it's a good idea, too, to know what the uh, uh, most popular apps around you are for uh, Android and iOS, and not necessarily know how to use them, but at least know what those suggestions are when people ask, uh, like we had a question a couple of weeks ago about. Mm-hmm. Well, and uh, I think a lot of the resistance to when the new app came out was just it was something different and having to learn it at least initially, although I had my own issues with it. But even trying to learn to use Cashly, you know, there's a learning curve and it is a little bit frustrating because you're used to, you know, everything being seamless and you go and you do what you're going to do and when you're having to fish around, you know, for things, um, it is frustrating. But, you know, if you're, we were talking about being mentors to young cashers. If you're going to mentor people, you should know what's available. And maybe that's my professor coming out, you know, in me. But um, you should know what's available and be able to help people, you know, make a good decision. Because if they have an app they enjoy, then they're going to enjoy the game and they're going to write better logs and they're going to maybe hide better caches. I don't know. Maybe it's a self-fulfilling prophecy or something. Yeah, but you know, the cell phone, the smartphone is the common thing that almost everyone has in their pocket these days. So it's cheap and easy to just go to the uh, Google Play Store or the App Store and download the uh, uh, free app from geocaching.com and get started. But in most cases, people are probably going to move out of that pretty quick, especially if they're not getting that premium membership. So you know, keep in mind some of the uh, common ones that are used in your area, because those are the ones that they can get help with if you can't help them uh, with it directly, too. Daryl, I think it's a lot like photography. You know, if you're going to go buy a camera, find out what your friends are using. If you're going to use a geocaching app, find out what your friends are using. 
Yeah, absolutely. And find out what they like and don't like about it too. Mm-hmm. You know, cause it might be that, uh, it's not something that's going to work for you. You know, and you might have something else. And if you're going to go and, you know, learn it yourself and do it. Cool. <laughs> But it, it's amazing at the uh, number of caching apps we actually have and how different they all are, and at the same time, how similar they are. Mm-hmm. That's right. Well, and I mean, I've not used anything. I, all I ever cached with was my phone until I bought a GPS this year for the first time. You know, I had a GPS app on my phone, but I bought a GPS for the improvement of accuracy and to be quite frank so I can periscope and look for the cash at the same time. <laughs> Social media made you buy a piece of hardware. Uh, yeah, I suppose that is true. <laughs> but, um, you know, the, the it's just easy. Like you said, you know, if I'm coming home from work, I don't always have my GPS with me, but I always have my phone with me. Or if I'm out meeting a friend for lunch, you know, I've got my phone with me. I may not have my GPS with me. So, you know, it, I think that that's the way of it. And, you know, a lot of young people that I've tried to get interested in the game, they've got their phone and they're very comfortable using it. So, you know, get them used to using it and doing things the right way. And then, you know, it makes the game better for everybody. Mm-hmm. Well, but the uh, cell phones do have some issues that, you know, you have to be aware of. And that is mostly you might not have signal when you need it. That is a huge problem where I live because um, I don't even have good cell signal at my house. I have to keep a landline at my house because to be able to talk on my cell phone, I have to stand on the southeast corner of my horse barn next to a particular fence post or I don't have cell signal. You know, so, and then when you get into the National Forest, I live near the Ozark National Forest, there is no cell signal there whatsoever. So if I'm going to geocache, I have to use offline lists. And I think that was one of my tips. Offline lists are your friend. You can't assume you're going to have signal everywhere. So anytime I'm going out for a long, you know, a day with my friends, I always make some kind of an offline list, you know, and keep it on my phone or put it on my GPS because I just assume I'm not going to have signal. Mm -hmm. Right. That's well, and that can great. be, yeah, it's, it can be also a great way to do um, uh, something like cherry pick your caches, as we mentioned in the last show uh, and previously. You know, you can use something like Project GC, import that uh, GPX file, uh, not in the official app, though, at least not yet, uh, the geocaching app. But, uh, you, you know, it's a great way to get just the caches you want. And by eliminating the caches that you don't necessarily want, it stops that temptation of, but it's right over there. Let's just run over and get it. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, and, and that's that, one thing. I mean, you know, I try to be really focused when I go and cash because in our areas, I'm sure y'all have the same problem. Some people have stopped playing the game, yet they still have, you know, 50, 100 caches out there, and they're in horrific shape. Uh, Limax says that he actually uh, makes sure he has an offline list if he's going into the forest. Uh, he uses a phone quite a bit for urban caching, and it's fine for that, too. See, I would also say to have an offline list if you're going to go to any mega event. This is summer's coming up. Absolutely. It's a great, great season for large gatherings, and don't expect uh, decent cell phone signals when you're in those large gatherings. Yeah, well, it, even day-to-day, I, you know, I have the... Uh, um, local caches as a pocket query and I'll update that every couple of days so that I just have all of those in the uh, phone because there's more than one time when I've been, you know what, I really got to find a cache right now. I need to get away from the office, whatever, and geocaching.com has had maintenance. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's get on to the next bit of uh, feedback, which is also about something you can do with your smartphone. Hey everyone, this is Dano of Team Pugatch, and I'm just calling in to let you know my tip for geocaching. This is my super special pro tip, so don't share it with anyone. Okay, okay, share it with everyone. Uh, My pro tip is, when you're out hiking and you get all those trail maps, take a picture of the maps. I like to take the picture every time I run into a new one, because maybe the blue trail where I started in the parking lot is now the yellow trail, because I took a left or a right somewhere. That way you can easily find your way back, and the GPS is uh, bouncing around like crazy during a tree cover. 
All right, take care and keep on cashing. So there, this is a uh, tip that I've used on several occasions, and we were actually looking for apps that would help you out with uh, positioning on that. I think we did find a couple, but it's escaping me right now what those might have been. But I was even doing this in the uh, dumb phone days, where you you know the feature phones, where you had uh, you know junky little you know 640 by 480 camera that was exciting, even that you know low res version of the image was enough to be helpful. But uh, I would carry around a little point and shoot sometimes, and snap the pictures there. Just it, it's the same thing. Exactly. Yeah, I do the same thing if we're out in the national forest because a lot of the trails are not well marked, you know. Especially if we're out riding horses and we need to get back to the trailer. <laughs> so. Now, Limax says that he's taking pictures of the kiosk maps before going off hiking if he hasn't found a trail map, and that—that's I think exactly what we're talking about here. Is you know, those those big printed maps that are wood that you don't get to take with you, or you know sometimes metal, whatever. But the, oh, the not the them. little. You, yeah, I guess you could take it with you. You have to be dedicated, but you can do it. <laughs> Talking about dedicated, why don't we move on to the uh, next tip from uh, Coons and Bud. And I actually caught a periscope from him uh, after an accident uh, while on a caching trip. So hopefully by the time he's he doing hears better. Us, yeah, yeah, he's a friend of mine. He's doing a lot better. Yeah, is he out of the uh, hospital then? Uh, yeah, oh yeah, he's out. He's, oh, uh, he's home. He went home, I think, a couple of days ago. So yes, but... So good, 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 good. Uh, in any case, so ho he'll uh, hopefully be home for this one, which I guess he is actually. So he'll, he'll be at home and enjoying this from home. So uh, Chris, why don't you read this one? Certainly. He sends an email in or a, a tip via email. It says a power run, a power trail run. Try to get at least three geocachers: a driver, the seeker slash replacer, and another to navigate. And have extra logs, have them already signed and ready to go, and containers, maybe 25 to 50. You can add a fourth, too, just to have them navigate uh, or have the extra logs and containers. <laughs> I say after five or ten geocaches, rotate your assignments. This way, no uh, one person gets too bored or too tired. A large vehicle is also good, and you have lots of room, and it's easy to enter and exit as you cache. Remember have fun. A power trail is number boosters and very tedious. Yeah. Uh, Limax says that he uh, does the power trails on his own and enjoys the walks. That That's uh, not going to get you the numbers, but no. it, it is a lot of fun. Um, um, I've, I've talked to cashers around here who have done the ET Highway or the uh, uh, Route 66 and uh, especially on the ET Highway, you're out in the middle of the desert. It's dusty, it's dirty. They've rented a uh, van, a uh, minivan, with a sliding door. And they said one key is uh, make sure that the van will still run with the door open. Because they would drive along leaving the door open because you're only a tenth of a mile. Somebody would jump out, grab, actually swap out the containers and jump right. back in. Um, and they said, you know, after the first day, there is just dust everywhere in the van. It's destroyed. <laughs> but uh, they they found a couple of uh, minivans that will not drive with that door open. Oh, yeah, 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 very true. Uh, oh, wow. Um, uh, Sydney uh, says uh, she personally doesn't agree with caching this way because uh, she wants to find all the clash caches that she claims. One of the one of the things that uh, you'll usually find with these is you know people will hold up the container or whatever when they do the power uh, trails uh, by like bike and stuff like that. In the car, it's usually like a team though, so a little bit uh, mm -hmm. different. Well, in the power trails that I've done with my friend uh, Carol, she caches under the name Pink Hitch. Um, you can usually see the container when you drive up. They're they're yeah. they're stuck in a sign so that you can see them. And if we're in the national forest, she drives a truck. I drive a truck. You know, if we're in one of our trucks, I sit on the tailgate. I don't even bother getting back in the truck. I just sit <laughs> on the tailgate and we just drive past and I grab it and sign it and we go on to the next one. You know, because they're a tenth of a mile apart. You can usually see the next one, you know. Mm -hmm. So there's no point in getting in and out of the truck. Limax says he starts at the middle of three caches and walk to the previous one and then goes to the next one. 
then I'm going to uh, interject a uh, tip for power caching by bike, which is if you're going out and back, you know, the best way to do it is really station a car at each end. But if you're not going to do that because some trails don't allow it or you are caching alone or you know, one car kind of thing, skip every other cache. That way, as you're coming back, you have half the caches to do and you're not going to get as bored with it. Though, it is still faster if you start by going all the way to the end and then cache on the way back. It's just a little bit more boring, though I enjoy the ride. <laughs> Limax had also called in something, so let's hear that one. Hello, Daryl and Chris. This is Limax from the San Francisco Bay Area calling in with a tip for episode 231. As you have received from me on a couple of occasions... I have a tendency not to bring water with me. And so really my tip is when you go out geocaching, be sure to hydrate. Bring water. Like I said, Daryl and Chris, you've got a couple stories from me where basically the theme of those stories were the fact that I didn't bring water with me. Go out geocaching, please bring water. Thanks a lot. Yeah, and he's not the only one who's uh, done that. Uh, exactly. I, I've fortunately not had any drastic situations, but I have run out of water because I didn't bring enough, too. Uh, you know, I have, too. And, you know, time, well, you know, it's so close. It's only a tenth of a mile from the car, but you may have to walk a mile to actually get there. I've done that, too, where even if it's a cool day, that's where it sneaks up on you. If it's a cool mm -hmm. day or if it's an overcast day... You know, by the time, and you know, everyone knows this or probably knows this, by the time you're actually feeling thirsty, you are beyond the point of being dehydrated. So I always try to carry water, and you're exactly right. It, just because it looks like it's a tenth of a mile away, I went to one one day that there had been an ice storm, a wind storm, and a fire since the cache had been put out. It wow. looked like God had played pickup sticks in, this, in these woods, and I had to walk you know, a mile to get a tenth of a mile because I was wow. fishing around, you know, trees and all this stuff. So. I, I don't want to cash where you cash. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful, though, you know. Okay. It is beautiful there. It's just this one particular area that had some significantly bad luck. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, we are running kind of long, so I'm going to do uh, uh, one tip that I wanted to uh, mention, which is uh, cord.info can be a really handy friend. If you're looking up a GC number or something for someone, uh, you just do cord.info slash and the GC code. Or if you're looking up a, a TV, you can do the same thing. It's uh, you know, uh, cord.info slash and then the TV number. Not the tracking number, but the actual TV number. Right. And those are just short links that you can share around. So it's, it's real handy for all kinds of things like social media. And, you know, of course, when someone gives you something that you have to look up real quick, just uh, I do that all the time because I just, you know, someone gives me a cord and, or a GC code they want me to do something for. That's the best way to look it up. Chris, do you have any uh, last minute uh, tips? Well, you know, I think you guys covered them, the majority of the ones. I mean, you know, they're all good. Um, you know, read it, take water, and let somebody know that you're going out caching if you're caching alone. See, I was hoping you were going to mention that one. Yeah, I, you know, that's one of the ones that, that get me. You hear about these cachers, you know, who hurt themselves and nobody knows exactly where they are, so. Yeah, I was thinking you were going to suggest Glimpse. Oh, you could use Glimpse. Glimpse is great, but if you're going out where there's no cell signal, it's even more important that you let people know where you're going. Oh, absolutely. And thanks again, uh, Doc Firewoman, for joining us tonight and helping I us out. It. You bet, I enjoyed the, it. Uh, Google <laughs> issues. It happens, you know. What can hopefully, you do? hopefully, the next time we have you on, we won't have so many uh, issues with uh, Hangouts. Uh, but is there any one last uh, tip that you might want to share? Um, yeah. Go geocaching. Just go. I mean, stop wait on, waiting on, oh, I'm going to go this weekend, or oh, I'm going to go next week, or whatever. Call one of your friends and just go. Preferably call somebody that's not very familiar with the game and take a new person out. The only way things are going to get better is if you educate the new people. See, I got my professor hat on. That's my tip. 
<laughs> and then for anyone who wants to uh, check out those uh, periscopes or any of the other stuff that you're doing, how can they find you? Yes, I'm at Doc Firewoman on Twitter and Instagram and Periscope. So you can find me on there. Um, or um, I'm also on, on Facebook as well. So you can bet Periscope and Twitter, it's at Doc Firewoman. So check it out. You can see my geese. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us tonight. You bet. And I want to say thank you to all our patrons. Uh, you probably know by now, Every podcast has a series of expenses, and we want to thank our patrons for helping us out with those expenses. If you want to find out more and find out what you can get is be uh, by becoming one of our patrons, head on over to the Cashamaniacs website and click on the Patreon link there. You know, and we've been doing the uh, hangouts with the patrons once a month, but you know, the last couple of months we've been so busy we haven't done it. Hopefully we'll get the, something scheduled in there before too long. We just have a pack schedule again this month, though. Uh, next week, we're going to have episode uh, 232, which was supposed to be the smartphone versus GPS show. Unfortunately, Land Monkey had a uh, obligation pop-up that he had to uh, back out. So we have something pretty exciting, and that's going to be Nick of Cashley is going to join us, along <laughs> with Scott Burks. So we're going to get to uh, uh, get a little bit more information about Cashley, and with Scott on the show, I'm sure he's going to drill him with uh, all kinds of questions because he's been uh, using that app heavily the last several weeks. So, so Daryl, does this mean smartphones win by default? I guess so. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> See, Land Mikey, what happens when you're not on the show? <laughs> you just lose. <laughs> all right, June 16th for episode 233, we're going to be talking with hopefully two of the women behind GIF, but at least one of them will be joining us. So we'll get a lot more information about the Geocaching International Film Festival, how you can join, how that's going to work this year, and you know, probably a little bit on how you can host one, which I'm kind of hoping to do myself. Uh, then on the 23rd, we're going to be talking about geocaching.com search. And you know that, that guy, Ben, that uh, uh, Rock Chalk was saying he doesn't like mm -hmm. very much? Mm -hmm. He's going to be on talking all about the search. All about the search. Then for the last show of June, which is going to be on the 30th, which actually might be the first show of July, depending on uh, when you're listening to the shows, we're going to have another randomized show. And, man, that thing is already packed with notes. So we've got way too many uh, uh, items on that list, and I'm sure we're going to have to start squeezing in more of these uh, randomized shows. So that's the uh, entire schedule through the month of June. Nice. Be sure to check the Cashamaniacs website at cashamaniacs.com for more on the Geo Gearheads, including show notes from this and all our episodes. We love hearing from our listeners, so leave us feedback by emailing geogearheads at cashamaniacs.com or through social media. Your support helps keep the Cashamaniac shows coming. Please consider becoming a patron through the link on our website to support the Cashamaniac shows. Geo Gearheads is produced by Chris Umfenauer and Daryl Wattenberg. The show's copyright 2016 by Daryl Wattenberg, all rights reserved. Yes, we're the Casamania.